fam, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the Grayscale Trust and also the uh, traditional markets as well. So with that being said, let's get it. All right, so there was an especially brutal day in the markets today, which uh, again, I don't know if this is a normal occurrence for <laughs> November or not, but it's, uh, I mean, considering the crazy pump we just had recently as a result of Trump getting elected, um, Am I surprised there is a pullback? Not really. Uh, that's kind of to be expected. Again, you know, we talked about the EMAs in previous videos. EMAs is a reversion tool, right? Usually when the price gets too far above something, it always comes back to the median. Then it takes off from there. Okay, so we're kind of seeing that right now. Um, in terms of the data, I mean, the data pretty much came in at whatever. I don't want to go over this too deep, but you can see retail sales month over month. Eh little better than expectations, not as good as the prior month, um, year over year, pretty good compared to the prior year. So that's good. But, you know, again, it's kind of like the markets are weighing up like, well, you know, did the Fed, Fed cut too soon or are they not cutting enough? If they don't cut enough, will there be a recession? If they're cutting too soon, will there be inflation? I don't know why it's impossible for them to believe there's a world where they can have their cake and eat it too. Um, I mean, maybe they're missing the forest for the trees here. I don't know. I mean, the, you would think that these people would get what's really going on here. Like I've explained to you guys with the Trump will ultimately get rid of the extenuating circumstances that are keeping inflation elevated or a threat uh, of resurgence, as I should say. You know, you would think that these people, sophisticated whales that have tons and tons of money would get this. Uh, but for some reason, they're not. Even they, on occasion, get ruled by their emotions. Okay, and Believe it or not, <laughs> fear and greed is a real thing in these markets. All right, so I wanted to show you guys this um, on the traditional markets. So we had this, you know, this really nice ascending triangle here um, on the NASDAQ. And I believe, well, we didn't really have one so much on the ES, but it's very obvious on the NASDAQ. Okay. So we had a pop out and then a, basically a pullback in. This could be a pump fake or a uh, what's known as an overcut. That's the opposite of an undercut. Do I think this is the case? Probably not. Look, um, I mean, the move that we saw recently in the last week was pretty explosive. Even the portfolio that we have in Robinhood was up like 11%. Uh, I think it was like in a single week, which is insane. Um, not that it can't happen, of course, you know, playing the right cards at the right time. That could easily be the case consistently, but it just kind of blew up out of nowhere. So I think we're just simply retracing to healthy levels here. Uh, and besides, you guys can see that the RSI and the MACD has had to cool off a little bit. That's to be expected. Okay. Um, but here's actually what I want to point out. So you guys can see this rolling over, right? We're retesting the EMAs. Do I think we're going to dump off a cliff and the markets are going to go, you know, into a bear market? No, I don't. I think this is just a standard retracement that's to be expected. So the reason I'm bringing this up, I did want to point this up. Okay. It's Friday right now. Market session Friday. It's closed. Markets are closed, but they will be opening it again on Monday. Um, again, I don't know what, I didn't even think about this until now, but I don't know what uh, day Thanksgiving is next week. Markets will probably be closed for that day, but I don't think it's on Monday. Um, if it is, again, I'll check after this video, then maybe they will be closed. I don't know. But based on how oversold we are on the NASDAQ here uh, at market session close today, I would say likely we're probably going to get a green day in the markets on Monday. Okay. And again, I could be wrong about this, but we did go up into the close. Okay, there was a look. I'm just going to show you guys this. Okay, actually, I'll show you on the futures. But there was a nasty, nasty sell-off today. Okay, you can see all these red candles on the four hourly chart. I mean, this is just like stupid, absolutely stupid levels of selling off. Okay, um, I mean, this is panic. Well, I shouldn't say panic, but it, I mean it's borderline panic. Um, but again, last time we got oversold on the Nasdaq. What happened? We based out, boom, took off like a rocket ship. Um, I'm going to go down a little bit here as well. Kind of show you guys the hour, hour chart here so you can see how ridiculous this is. See the last time we got the shade of red back here, uh, late October. It's spooky enough on the 31st. Uh, guess what? That was the bottom. Boom. Took off like a rocket, right? Uh, so we're seeing the, the same thing on... Basically, the hour and the four hourly chart. Again, you can see that this, uh, we basically tested previous levels of resistance here. 
now turn support, that would be exactly what you would want to see if this thing was going to reverse and go to the upside. So here's what I think is going to happen. Okay. Um, again, oversold on the four hour. I think what we're going to see on Monday is a move up. Okay. I think next week is going to be green. I think it's also going to be very green for crypto. As a matter of fact, I think it's probably going to be green for the miners. And again, don't hold me to this, but I'm pretty confident this is going to be the case. Uh, so Bitcoin, native crypto moving up, of course. Um, I don't want to touch on that too deep. Uh, and in the future, at some point, when we eventually do become worth a lot more, um, I will say we're probably going to start taking on uh, specific single stock or ETF position trades, actual position trades with size. Uh, so when we do that, uh, hopefully by that time, we'll have like a Patreon or something where you guys can kind of get in on the trades real time, maybe even throw your own ideas out there, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. But, you know, situations like this where the four hour is showing massive oversold, uh, that is that basically would be if we were getting into a stock, that would be a signal for a position trade right there. Um, OK, so I wanted to touch on. Let's see if I can find it in the miners real quick. OK, so. I want to drill down here a little bit into the lower time frame. So you can see we just hit basically oversold on CLSK. Again, we're kind of seeing this, uh, and I'll explain why I'm talking about this in a minute. So you can see this basically bullish divergence here. Again, price going lower, RSI going higher, basically pretty much from not quite the open, but after the open into the close. Uh, again, that leads me to believe likely the markets and the miners are also going to go up higher on Monday or whatever the next trading session is going to be starting next week. Same thing on the 30 minute. You can see the obvious divergence here, right? Um, but the thing I want to point out is that it did get oversold. Okay. Um, and I keep going over here. The time frames, not quite oversold, but pretty close on the hourly chart. So the thing I want to point out here on the daily too with CLSK, and again, I know this isn't about the miners, but I want to put this out. Okay. We did fill this gap. Um, so like I told you guys more often than not, these gaps usually do get filled. You can see right here as well, although it went a little bit lower than the gap, that's fine, whatever. Uh, so this one did get filled mostly and then kind of wicked up right off support. So you can see these long wicks to the upside or these green candles, in my opinion, are likely confirming that the, and again, I could be wrong about this, but can likely confirming that the move down for the miners is over for now. And we should start to see some moves up starting next week. So the reason I'm pointing this out actually is because we actually decided to go ahead and pick up another 200 shares of CLSK today. Um, again, we could have picked them up at cheaper prices at eight, nine, ten dollars but we didn't actually think we were going to get a second retracement on the miners. So uh, considering how steep the retracement was and the charts were looking kind of oversold, especially on the indices, which these are seeming to follow the indices. We just decided to go ahead and buy uh, at lower prices. So you can see here 500 shares, average cost 1832. Um, we still have the call debit spreads too, of course. So that kind of all plays into the narrative there. It was just an opportunity. We just, we couldn't resist. <laughs> we couldn't help ourselves. We saw the opportunity there and decided to go ahead and uh, strike while the iron was hot. Okay. So the grayscale trusts. All right, so let's go over the weekly time frame here. Nice big green candle, by the way, on LTCN. Okay, so MACD, RSI is still golden, still bullish. Um, so the thing I wanted to point out here about LTCN is we did close the week green. And we did also, we are pushing against those EMAs, so that's very bullish. Still got to get outside of the channel. Uh, again, the channel, we saw something similar back here when this thing was in an uptrend, which it technically still is in an uptrend because we have these higher lows going on here. Okay. Um, Although, be it, they are very far apart, but still, they are higher lows. Uh, so you can see the last time we got a channel formation like this, while the price was slowly crawling up, eventually it exploded to the upside. I'm kind of expecting something similar to happen here. All right, so the buy zone. Um, once again, I would say it's pretty much still the same on LTCN, so 13 to kind of pretty much where the price currently is, so 16-ish, somewhere there. Uh, 25 to 54 would be the targets in this case. These are short-term targets. LTCN's all-time highs at 510, so 300% gain there. BCHG, 
uh, still kind of chopping around, but am I too worried about this? Not really. I mean, look, when the when these cryptocurrencies pop off, they're going to do it out of nowhere, and you guys are going to be like, okay, what the F, dude? Why is this just now happening all, all of a sudden? Uh, I mean, that's crypto for you. It's hard to predict. It's impossible to know exactly when they're going to pop off. Um, what I can say is the only things that we can predict with some level of certainty is usually in the cycle when Bitcoin's going to go to all time highs and then roughly about when we should expect to have an all season, right? And kind of tie those into other assets that are on the market that we can kind of correlate them with. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. All right. So LTC on buy zones, 710 to about 770, uh, 10 and a quarter going all the way up to roughly about 24. I'm all the way up, baby. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, sorry, y'all, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, 200, 207% gain here. Uh, and I don't know, I haven't actually watched this myself, but apparently there's supposed to be a, f um, supposed to be a brawl between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul today in the MMA ring. Again, usually I don't watch MMA much, but I may go ahead and watch that. Uh, look, I... Look, as some as somebody whose lineage comes from New York, and Mike Tyson is from New York, I can tell you all right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, Mike Tyson is—he seems like he's all about the business. People from New York are very much all about their business. They don't mess around. Okay, uh, they're a pretty tough people. I can tell you right now. Uh, Trump is another good example. He was born in New York, uh, and Jake Paul is kind of an arrogant little cuss. So I would say. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Mike Tyson's an intense dude, man. He looks like he's going to try to go in there and unalive him. Uh, that's how serious he's, he, is, he is about it. So in my opinion, my money's on uh, Mike Tyson. If I had to make, if I was a betting man and I was going to bet on a fight, I would put my money on Mike Tyson. You guys let me know what you think down below. Okay, so 350 to 430 on support here for HN, uh, 680 to 1050 as the resistance. It does look like it wants to push above this wedge here still. So that's pretty bullish. So 190. Of course, you got the green on Instagram. That's also bullish as well. ETCG. Ooh, nice little. Uh, I would have liked to have seen this be green, but nice little dragonfly looking kettle here. Uh, pushing up in price above the EMAs. I'd say that's very bullish. Okay. The EMAs on the MACD. And also the uh, RSI are very bullish. So we got that breakout of this bearish pattern, which is exactly what we expected to happen. So um, at this point, I would say the buy zone probably going to be about where the EMAs are. So 9 to 10.50, somewhere there. Targets 13.10 to roughly about 20. Okay, so massive move here, 133% gain, ETH E. Uh, okay, so the gap did get filled. That's to be expected. Again, double bottom here. Potential W pattern gap got filled. So this is actually looking quite bullish, even though the scandal is kind of ugly. Um, it's not quite out of the zone yet, but it's above the EMAs. EMAs curling up. So I would say even though this is not technically support, it could be a buy zone. So about 23 to 2850. Uh, targets up here 47 for the cup and handle target. Roughly about 100% move. And of course, we finally got the first green bar on the histogram. That is always a bullish sign. Uh, GBAT still struggling here on the MACD, but I'm pretty confident as we inch closer to alt season, which again, I think that's likely not going to happen until BTC dominance tops out. Uh, you can see right here, it's still climbing. So until it stops climbing, whenever that's going to be, um, the smaller cap alts like basic attention token might struggle a little bit. Okay, so support here, 430 to 520, and then 8 to roughly about 32 at the highs. And again, when I say it may struggle, I mean, look, GBAT is just sitting here at the support. I mean, look, if we were if we were looking just to pile onto a position trade, this would be the opportunity right here for me personally, if I was going to do this, so 630% gain. Every, every single week that this thing was in the support, I would be looking to add to it. If I was going to position trade... And just say, okay, this level, this white line, and this green box, if I ever see the price anywhere in those zones, I'm buying the dip. And then just wait for it to rip, because it likely is eventually going to rip. All right, so GPAD. Um, again, you can you can take a look at it one of two ways. Oh, my God. 
Oh god, it's never gonna go to the moon, guys. We're all screwed. Everything's going to zero. Or you could be like, you know, you could be like the Giga Chad that's like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna buy this, you know, S H I T right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, it's so cheap. The all time high is at 30. I could make a 6X. Of course, nothing's guaranteed. It could maybe not go up, but I highly doubt that's gonna be the case, okay? Because usually when, look, usually when the all season begins and things go up, everything goes up. I think I've told you guys this before, but even shite coins like Bitcoin Gold and uh, Tron and uh, Digibyte and coins that nobody ever even looks at. They just, they're like, okay, yeah, whatever. That's worthless. It's done nothing for months, right? Even Dogecoin at one point, nobody looked at Dogecoin and then all of a sudden Dogecoin was everybody's favorite, right? Even things that are considered to be garbage coins that nobody wants, most likely going to go up, okay? All right, so fill G, file G, F I L G, whatever. Nice little double bottom potential W pattern here. Target would be 113 for the W, uh, 35 to 42 here as support. The all time high, roughly about $400. Nice little 10X. I mean, that's not bad. And again, you're talking if that's just going to the all time highs, it could easily do more than that. 956% gain here at GLIV. Uh, I would say anywhere maybe between the top of this support and the bottom of resistance here could be a good buy area. So 690 to 1210, somewhere in there. Um, I would just, personally, I would just be looking at the all-time highs as a target because, again, the the bottom of the current resistance is kind of a little bit too close to that buy area. About a 1,060% gain. G-Link, nice big fat green candle. That's always a good sign possible triple bottom here also a kind of ugly w pattern target would be 93 dollars again if it gets above the emas and it gets above the zone it'll be at 93 so likely it's probably going to push that past 93 in my opinion okay so 37 to 44 for the buy zone targets could be anywhere from 83 to as high as 220 um, again you're welcome to do your own targets if you want to i'm just kind of telling you guys how i would position if this was me so 492 percent gain here GSOL still climbing. What do you know? Like I told y'all. Again, notice how the RSI got extremely close to getting oversold here on the weekly. That is the, I mean, other than the monthly, that is the most oversold time frame you can get oversold on. So that is like, that is the golden, golden signal right there to get the hell into a position for these whales that have millions or billions of dollars. Okay. They look for stuff like this and say, hmm. It's massively oversold on the weekly. Let me go ahead and buy and just position and just let it rip and kind of do its thing, right? Okay, so support down here, uh, 73 to 78. I would say, I mean, it's above, well, yeah, screw that support. Okay, so it's a, it's above this support here. So 172 to 207, uh, that's going to be the support, in my opinion. Again, V-shaped recovery is kind of what I'm expecting here. Uh, 300 to 580 as the target i mean some whale could have dumped their bags here i don't even know honestly 255 percent gain maybe they were waiting to see if this thing was going to rip higher and then they kind of eventually just gave up and they were like well okay maybe it's not a, an accumulation maybe it's not going to rip higher maybe they bought all the way down here thought it was going to rip higher and then was like well screw that i'm gonna take my profit and they dumped and then boom there you go uh, and then V-shape recovery or whatever the case, same thing with GXLM, but the inverse in this case, instead of it going down, it's actually going up. Okay. So, uh, for this one, I would say the buy area at this point, roughly about 23 to 27, somewhere there kind of touching those EMAs, uh, targets here, 53 to 70. Again, GXLM at this point, I would say is looking really, really bullish. Uh, probably going to go high pretty quick. 190% gain. Again, the candle is above the EMAs and above all these lines here. So that's very bullish. Uh, Man is getting a nice little pop too as well. That's always good to see. Nice little triple bottom there. Um, again, I just want to confirm. Yeah. Okay. This is still above the EMAs. So I would say the line here would be the buy zone. So roughly about $10. And then of course the, you have the all time high at 70. So about a 10 X. It's kind of treading those uh, EMAs on the daily, so I would say it's definitely possible it could still dip down there one last time before popping off on that white line. So 620% gain here. Uh, Zcash still going sideways. It could be accumulation, could be distribution. Um, 
in this phase, in this phase of the cycle, especially when taking a look at the MACD, I would say likely this is accumulation. Okay, so three thirty to six dollars at support. Targets here roughly about eight dollars to uh, ten and a quarter. All righty, so you got roughly about two hundred twenty percent gain here. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.